Hello, Mark chapter 11 on today's Godcast. Not a broadcast, not a podcast. It's all about God. Godcast. A chapter a day keeps false teachers away. That's why I'm doing this every day or I try to every day. It doesn't always happen. But I'm bringing you to the next chapter in order as we work our way through the New Testament and uh, up to Mark 11 today. First, though, Father, it's all about you. So I'm inviting you to please join us. Two or more of us are gathered in your name, Lord Jesus. And you said you'd be here with us. Two or more of us are gathered here together in your name. This is all for you. Holy Father, please give us your Holy Spirit so we can really understand what you want us to know about you through this. This is what this is about. A relationship with you, with your Son, your Holy Spirit communing together with the creator of the universe, our all in all. Please give us wisdom and discernment and understanding and revelation. I ask you for all those things, the gift of prophecy, understanding of your scripture, discernment of what is of you and what is of the enemy, so we're not fooled by any of these wicked people who've come up in your name. Please do not let us, please do not let us fall away, Lord. And wisdom. I pray this all in your name, King Yeshua, Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Mark chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, on which no one yet has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? You say, the Lord has need of it, and he immediately will send it back here. There you go, unquote. Got your orders. Dismissed. They went away and found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders were saying to them, Why, what are you doing untying the colt? They spoke to them just as Jesus had told them, and they gave them permission. They brought the colt to Jesus and put their coats on it, and he sat on it, and many spread their coats in the road, and others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. Those who went in front and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is, is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and came into the temple, and after looking around at everything, he left for Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late. On the next day, when they had left Bethany, he became hungry. Seeing at a distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if perhaps he would find anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples were listening. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves and would not permit anyone to carry merchandise through the temple. And he began to teach and say to them, it is not written, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a robber's den, unquote. The chief priests and the scribes heard this and began seeking how to congratulate him for being so honest and forthright and, and, and reminding them that, yes, this is God's temple and not a place for this kind of these shenanigans to be going on. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not what it says at all. The chief priests and the scribes heard this and began seeking how to destroy him. For they were afraid of him. For the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. When evening came, they would go out of the city. As they were passing by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots, the roots Being reminded, Peter said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered, saying to them, 
have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and they will be granted you. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your trans transgressions. Unquote. Do you realize how important forgiveness is? I am speaking as one who was guilty of this. For a long time, I had harbored grudges and resentment, it's hard, I understand, but you just do it. You have to do it because God will not forgive your sins, even in Christ Jesus. That's what I read here. Are you going to tell me different? And is it based on scripture if you're going to tell me different? Or are you just going to, it's a conjecture? No, nah, because I said so. Yeah, God wouldn't do that. What is, what did the son of the creator, Nothing was created without him. What did the creator of the universe say here? Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father who is in heaven, heaven will also forgive you your transgressions, your sins. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father who is in heaven forgive your transgressions. People have done bad things to me. I'm not perfect either. I've done bad things to them rarely on purpose. I'm just kind of like that happy-go-lucky Labrador puppy who comes in, you know, it's not, not quite fully grown and knocks things over and knocks people around, knocks people down. People I've hurt oftentimes, that's how it's happened. But I have to ask for forgiveness of not only my sins, but I have to ask for the Lord to teach me how to forgive others who I felt have really wronged me purposefully. Ones who wronged you by accident, you hopefully you can forgive them, like in an accident. Could be something really serious. Loved one lost a life because of somebody's accidental behavior in a you know, vehicle or something. And you're thinking, I can never forgive them. We have to. We have to. Verse 27. And they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him and began saying to him, by what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do these things? And Jesus said to them, quote, I will ask you one question and you answer me. And then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? Answer me, unquote. They began reasoning among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But shall we say from men? They were afraid of the people, for everyone considered John to have been a real prophet. Answering Jesus, they said, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, nor will I tell you by what authority I do these things. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Mark 11. That's, there's a lot of huge stuff there. I pray you go back and read it for yourself. That'll help you remember it. That'll help you retain this scripture when you read it for yourself. It won't take more than five, ten minutes. You're just reading silently to yourself. You need a Bible? Let me know. I'll get you one. Uh, there's a great Bible app that I use and recommend. I don't, I don't work for them. I don't make any money from them. In fact, it's free. They just take donations if you can or want to make one. Uh, and it's called Literal Word. And it's the New American Standard translation, which I think is the closest you can get to the original scrolls and tablets. And that's what's important to me. And it's free. Literalword.com. L-I-T-E-R-A-L word.com right have fun and uh 
I will talk to you all, Lord willing, tomorrow.